new design for, those become more of a, um, I think, one of the, like the useful things to concept up in in two D. And the reason being is like two two D being like not like a an end result, right? But just enough to get the idea across to to create the, the item, right? So um, I'll post a link to, to these, some sources we're talking about in the chat real quick as well, so you can see them in 3D. And then I'll show you my sketchbook where I design them and then we'll do some drawing. So the visual what I'm trying to show is like the, the level of which um, I think is like an adequate amount of detail. Like, I think for every person, it's a bit different, right? Like you have different um, levels of detail required that you need to see before you can start making something. But that being like a um, a big step before you can um, make the asset. And that can be like, um, most of the time, I think just like a napkin doodle, right? Like that kind of level of fidelity, you don't quite need to go quite as far as a fully rendered, um, you know, um, image. However, those are really nice to have, obviously, but in not um, not always necessary, especially like in your school work, right, or if you're working on an indie team. It's more about getting the idea so you can make the thing, because the game's the result, right? The concept art isn't necessarily the result, unless um, you want to be a concept artist and practice those things, in which case that's totally fine as well. So I'll post two links here. The second link I'll post actually has more um, I did more sketches for. So it's the first set I made. Yep. So it was raining. Cozy morning drawing vibes. Criminal morning drawing, but otherwise not. Okay. Um, can you guys see my video? Okay. For me, it's down in the corner, but I assume you guys can see it like on the screen. Cool. So generally, I do concept concept art for, for different um, purposes in in my drawings. So sometimes I'm drawing swords for fun, and sometimes I'm, I'm trying to explore ideas or come up with new new designs and sometimes I'm just redrawing um, reference material and looking at construction methods so that I'm better informed when I'm actually deciding to make um, different choices about how I create create um, create the sword itself right so different handle configurations different guards exist in real life and then adding my own unique shapes to them and different designs and only, only rendering enough that you know I, I can see mainly what I'm after is the silhouette and the construction details and what the materials are going to be. So I'm not like re loving rendering the metal. I'm just kind of scratching it up and being like, yeah, that's that's going to be where some some metal is. This page I come back onto all the time. This was just like a I kept drawing the same pommel, so I was like, I'll draw like a, a ton of different pommels. If you don't know what pommels are, pommels are this like um the end section of a sword. So like the um. Uh, the counterweight or the counterbalance for the sword. Also sometimes used for whacking people with as well. Turn the sword around, hit them with the heavy end of it. Some different designs in here. This one I actually made recently. I really like that one. And same with this one. I made this one in 3D as well. I can't show them just yet. Secret NDA stuff, but there are some small swords coming. Some Viking swords. Some types. There's a duck sword. Let's skip ahead a little bit. Okay, so this one here is from my other sword concept, so we'll come back to that in a second. But here are some of the concept that I did for the um, for these swords here, which are finished project. So in Chivalry we have like three tiers. So since you're trying to come up with like um and also like three different teams. So I'm coming up with, with like team ideas. Okay, so we want to do team skins, which we didn't do for these ones. Or um different tiers of of the built up level. So 
um, a few of these were actually based off of um, photo references that I, I first discovered and then redrew. And then I put them together. And the reason I put them together this way is I wanted to have my pommel and handle shapes and blade shapes all the same silhouette. So even though they're different levels of the sword as far as like rarity, exotic or, you know, whatever, they're still going to have um, the same shape read. So people aren't going to be able to confuse what sword the person is using, right? Because it's a, um, a combat game. So I broke down some of the handle parts that I liked and then assembled some different design options. This was one kind of handle design I settled on for the tier two. I never actually think I drew, drew out the tier two properly. That was just enough for me to, to, to make it. And there's the handle design as well, as you can see in that one. Um, it's pretty cool. So for those ones, I didn't actually even draw a final sword. So these are like later, latest concepts. But for these ones, I just like drew the parts and was like, yep, this is enough for me to, to kind of mix and match and create those ones there. Um, for the other set, I went a bit more in detail. This one's probably a little bit cooler to look at because I did more concept art for it. Let me just find the bit on here. What was that second link I posted? Um, just loading a bit on my phone. These ones here. Okay, so these ones. Well, the set three. These ones were hero ones. They were used for like um, finished art. So like the concept artist took it and actually created final art. So he's our concept artist. He's also our final artist. And he made like the promotional material with the character holding the sword. Um, so a little bit more just, like went into the design for it. So, starting with a photo reference, which is similar to this one, I started exploring different concepts for shapes, twisting different, um, twisting guards into different pommels, different shapes, and also kind of um, deciding if I wanted anything, any patterns or um, doodads on the blade engravings, right? So, I'm not liking as much as others. Some of these like slatted handle designs, which I actually decided on for this one here, which was a cool discovery, just mucking around with different ones. I'll put a little star here, actually. This is one of my chosen ones. So I think this was actually, yeah, there it is there. That's the tattoo one. So there's a few more. Decided on the three-ish I was going to do. And then once I had them, I'm like, hey, this is the one I'm going to do. It was a little bit more like, um, because there's going to be some engravings on the guard. How do I want those to look? So I'm not actually like drawing. You can see here, there's a little flowery details, but I'm not actually drawing um, flowers like properly. Right? I'm just kind of scribbling them in, just to give the idea of what it's going to be. Cause, like when I do the final art, right? I can figure out what those are going to be. But I want to, before I go in and draw the concept, I need to decide whether it's going to be any good first, or we'll make it. And in my case, it was enough just to kind of get it in my head what I'm going to do and then finish the process um, in 3D. I had a few more here. I think I was being a little bit doing some for fun here. This guy's kind of cool and wacky. Didn't go with that one but that was kind of fun. I know there's some more, some more guards as well. So there's heaps of them for the sword design. So I just keep going. I was trying some um, blade designs here for engravings on the on the blade, breaking it down into shapes and parts and different different doodads. I think I finally got to a point where I started designing the um the like the details in full for the guard. And for these ones, I should like um we're doing a little bit of three D right. I actually scanned or printed out my UVs and I drew the engravings on and then put them back in the computer and generated normal out of it. And I did that because it was um, easier than sculpting it 
or drawing it on the computer. I'm, I'm quite comfortable with, with pen and ink, so doing that kind of engraving was actually easier on pencil, which is a weird technique, but not something I'll probably teach, but something interesting I thought some of you guys are really adept in traditional art. You could even, like, um, if you're good at watercolors, for example, you could print out your UVs and you could paint your texture up <laughs> traditionally. Um, some games use techniques like that. There's a game on Twitter at the moment. Someone's um, doing it like an embroidery game, and their entire character is embroidered. They've embroidered it in real life, and they take a picture of that and put that all into the game, which is pretty interesting. Um, side question: Do you do engravings in ZBrush with just some fancy substance work? So you can do either or. You can do some like like um, like in substance or traditional, where you kind of draw it out by hand right like you draw a pattern out and then you give it some more detail and you could use like a normal map generator or substance to get some of that like detail stamped on i'll see if i can find them in a minute my actual ones that i used but essentially like um if you're doing a normal map right this is essentially a height map it's black and white so black is down white is up so i can take this image right and stamp it on for example and that's like with an alpha and that's what that what you would do in substance as well um, also, what you do in ZBrush, so if you wanted this to be actually 3D on a high poly and bake that, like we did with the bean can, onto our low poly, then you could stamp it on with an alpha map in ZBrush. But again, sometimes I think it depends on the, on the level of detail you want to do. If you had, um, if these these like horns and crowns and things were super sticky outy on the sword, I'll probably do it in ZBrush because I want that, that sculpt to come out. But because they're just line engravings, there's not much point actually doing that in ZBrush because the amount of polygons we're going to need, the amount of triangles we'll need to actually hold that detail is like super, super, super high poly. So the things I'd sculpt in ZBrush um, for swords would be, um, when I'm working on them, is generally none of the engravings, but I'll do um, damage, so like little nicks and scratches on the edges, that kind of thing, um, and any large details. So if there's... <clears throat> like in this example, some kind of wire wrapped around it. I'll probably like sculpt in the wire. But for a lot of the, um, yeah, like for this, this line, right? Um, for that, I'll sculpt it because it's got the three, lots of 3D detail. But something like this, where the, 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 the details are like engraved into the, the metal kind of thinly, yeah, sculpt them on. Um, you can get some detail to your work. I think with our, with our text limit, it's a little bit harder to do. You still can do cool details with the the, pix, the pixel textures. It'll definitely be something that you, we get to a little bit more um, in second year. So in second year 3D, um, which will be started next year for you guys, I think, there is a advanced 3D component, and you'll be making like some um, guns and characters and some rocks and things as well to start out with. And those are quite helpful for um, those hard surface techniques. So you'll be adding more details like that. And I recommend that kind of thing for that because you've got like eight weeks to work on a gun, right? There's so much details and cool engravings and things you could add to your your weapon. Um, but yeah, always encouraged detail. It's a it's, it's one of those cool things. Like most cultures around the world, no matter where you, you go, right? If you're going back in time to make weapons, are probably going to be decorating. The high status weapons in some way so even the lo like low status weapons often have some some decoration right even if it's a simplistic decoration so it's really a really fun idea i think to add those kinds of details to your work if possible right um and doing some like quick sketches and concept art essentially um thumbnailing it something like handles and pommels and things and details so that you can get an idea of what you might want to add before you spend ages in photoshop you know, copying and pasting or in substance, designing a um, a design. You could, you know, check it works on paper first, which is what I find is a really helpful strategy for um, for swords, sometimes for, for buildings, but generally I'm doing concept art mostly for, um, for weapons. Because, you know, you want more unique weapons because they're kind of like, they're kind of like characters in themselves. Characters kind of get the, the limelight when it comes to to weapons. Um, so I'll show you some books quickly, then we'll start doing some drawing. Um, okay. 
So, depending where you work, that might be as, as far as you take it. I think if you're gonna be, if you want to be a three D artist, you're probably not gonna be doing your own concepts. Um, I'm in the position where I'm, we're in a studio, which is like kind of medium sized, so I get to do a little bit of my own concept work. But generally, there's a concept artist that tells you what to make. If you're in a really big studio, the concept art could take get taken all the way. But I think what people forget generally is like um, stuff like this. This is like the Skyrim, Skyrim art book. These concepts are like relatively finished. I think that some of them are a little bit, a little bit rougher, but they've been taken further than like they probably needed to be for the design. And that's really cool for, um, I think three, like a three D artist, if you need to, um, I like a really strict concept to, to copy off. But quite often, if it's your own work, right, you don't, and, and a lot of it's in your head, and the sketch is enough to inform what you're going to make. You don't have to like take it to a fully rendered like glass, glass shield, or whatever it might be. So, I guess kind of deciding where to stop is the main, the main step in trying to like, you know, speed up the process as much as possible, so we're not spending a week of our like two week prototype right for our next. Um, Rapid games or whatever we're going to be doing next semester doing concept art. We want to be like, okay, quickly we need a sword. Uh, hang on, let me draw some a couple of designs out. We can decide on what it's going to look like, right? Um, I do think the concept art books are a little bit misleading. Like, obviously they're curating the best, the best art and also the most finished art and putting it into a book. So you end up with like an impression of concept art that's like, wow, well, these concept arts are like making these really finished pieces of art, right? But in reality, it's like those are generally have been dressed up for the for the concept art book release. Um, I think references are really good as well. This is one of my favorite um, sword artists. Just something about swords. I'll, I'll show you this. This guy's called Ben Booz. Unfortunately, he died of cancer, I think, a few years ago. Um, but he used to work on uh, Diablo. But if I call off the screen, sorry. Um, but he was a weapons designer for Diablo, and then this was his like personal, um, his personal work, personal project. So there's a lot of like really finished, cool sword designs that are quite unique. And then also some of the kind of stuff that I'm more keen on, which is just like the the super nice, thin, easy like lineup. And this hatching is way, way better than mine. Um, a bit more finished than mine as well. But like, I really cool in between. I like, I like it more because compared to like, I think the Skyrim book or something, it kind of shows more of a, a range between, you know, these guys like have outlines, they've been painted. These ones are full, like just ink sketch outlines. And then the final ones are like full on like Photoshop renderings. Or painterly renderings, right? They have like no line art, but are like made to look as if they were a 3D real asset. So it's kind of cool to see that, like, I guess the entire design process lined out with this guy. I like the tone back because you know anything about the yeah, but the weapons are kind of a bit more fantastical, but it's cool because like some of these are like unique designs, but they fit within the style, for example, of of Viking sword designs. That kind of brings me to my, my, my last point before we go forward. It's also like just being informed about the subject matter you're drawing. So if you're going to like, um, I was a student years ago when I was still teaching um, trade art part-time before I had my chivalry job actually, I was with Ali. And someone said to me, oh, you never taught us how to draw frogs. We never taught us how to draw a bear, I think was actually the example from this guy. And that was like, oh. Yeah, we, we, we can't step through every single animal, right? And learn how to draw every single animal. Um, so how, how would you learn how to draw a bear? How would you teach how to draw a bear? And doing that would be like breaking down bear anatomy, right? Drawing a bear, bear bones, and then drawing bear, bear muscles, and then drawing bears from different angles. Learning what the, what the different bones are called, the canines, the different teeth structures and things, so that you can recreate that creature like accurately. And the same thing goes for swords. So this was actually academic book I bought for uh, writing a paper about his, like historic um, Norse swords in games. So this was like a, um, or a 
an essay for my final year of school about fantasy versus historical and why people like fantasy stuff better. And this was just cool because it's like, I think the difference between like, you have a fun concept art book and then also like, here's like lengths of real swords and breakdowns of the shape and really scientific like how thick the pommel is, like what shape is it from the side, right? Which is awesome like detail for uh, breaking down subject matter realistically and understanding like what you're working on. So specifically that one's about Viking swords, but one about medieval European swords as well. But getting to know a little bit your subject matter before you start drawing it, I think it's a really cool and a really good idea. I'm going to grab some paper before we draw in the book. Give me one second. All right, cool. So a few uh, things I'd like, I'll probably mention that I do, which I, I kind of recommend, is I tend to only do my concept art in pen. So the reason being is just, just for, for speed purposes only. If you are drawing art that you need quickly, right, you need a concept quickly, and you're going to pencil everything first and then ink it, um, it's okay if you like are illustrating, right? And you, and you want a final result um, that holds up and you want to be specific about it. And I do do pencil first for illustrations. But for concept art, I think it's just a bit of a, like um, outlining it twice, um, slows the process down. So I tend to use just one, um, try to draw it once and use a pen. So the kind of things that that involves is not doing anything like um, it's kind of like scratchy lines you see some people do when they're outlining a shape but like being really direct with your lines and it takes a while to get like I guess used to drawing and um, being more direct with your lines rather than like trying to um, be slow and careful but that kind of speed and direction I find is like a super useful thing to to practice. So kind of my challenge for you guys today, if you are generally someone who uses a pencil a lot, is grab like a ballpoint pen or something, or an ink pen if you've got one. Ballpoints are cool too. I tend to use pigment liners. They're kind of expensive. So I also like these guys, which are like from Daiso for like thicker lines outlining but they also have a double sided so you get these like really cool inclines as well you sketch and color pencils yeah um well, a lot of us use like a um for example like a blue color pencil because you can actually like edit out blue on the computer for example right if it's a different color um so that's kind of a cool one um but yeah, generally, if you don't, if you tend to use pencil all the time, for today I suggest you try to just use a pen. And don't um, try not to be slow about it either. The quicker your movement is, the more accurate the line is. So a little test you can do for yourself, if you try to draw a straight line slowly, 
I can do it, but it's a little bit wiggly. If I draw a straight line fast, it wasn't as accurate, but the line quality is like a lot nicer. There's more like mood and direction to it. I think you're doing a bit of um, life drawing recently, right? And you get that from doing those those fast, um, uh, like one minute life drawing sketches of, of a person, right? The faster you go, the more expressive the lines are and the more kind of texture and interesting um, portions you might see. So if you haven't drawn any with a pen before, highly encouraged. And if you go, oh, I don't have a pen handy, I'm sure you've got a ballpoint pen somewhere in your abode. Something like that. I'm actually going to put the camera up on the screen so I can see because I can't tell what you guys can see. My like preview on Blackboard is too small. That should be okay. Cool. So I'm just doing some some warm up line tests. Normally I wouldn't do this. I'd just jump straight in. But kind of cool to see and to check out using pens we haven't before. Doing some hatching practice, spreading our lines out. Hatching, finishing. It's sort of getting like a, a feel for the medium we're in. If we're using pins, for example. Something went wrong. Can you guys hear me still? Computers like freaking out. All right, it's just a computer. <laughs> I do like a sphere. Catch it. But it's really fun. So it's a little bit hard with, with, with 3D objects, I think, doing pens. Trying to get like a a good circle as well. There's another good challenge. Different ways you can shade a, a sphere. The directional hatch is the nicest one, I think, but it's the hardest one to keep keep consistent where you don't do like this one here, which is like a Directional diagonal hash or a cross hash, but like a um, a textured one. That's what Ben Booz does in his sort of book a lot, actually as well. Another thing which is fun with pens, which I think makes it look really good fast, is line hierarchy. And this does go back to our problem of like having to draw the thing twice, but you can quite often add like a some kind of like a little shadowy hierarchy thing. To push the the details of those um, the shapes and give certain parts weight. I'll do that sometimes with some swords, right? Like some certain outlined sections. Not so much in here, but you can just like go over like the edge twice sometimes. But I do to emphasize some designs, like this one. Or you can do an outline. These ones have a line hierarchy, but it's a very subtle one. These guys here have it a lot more. You can see how thick. Sorry, I keep forgetting where the camera is. You can see how thick these kind of lines are compared to the detail lines. And that's really good for like showing, you know, the separate parts, right? Separating the hilt or the guard from certain sections or and whatever you're drawing, right? It's a useful technique. So I'm draw some circles. Draw some different shapes. Maybe some 3D shapes would be good too. If we're gonna draw some 3D swords. Swords are really fun to draw, I find, because they are flat. So it's really easy to do a concept for for a sword because you don't have to really consider too much perspective. But it is fun. To try those different ideas out.
Got some scratches. Yeah, the drone looks cool. It's like, um, I think it's called like a paper something or other. They're kind of a little bit expensive, but the papers, it's paper blanks. You can get them in Gordon Harris. Also have lines them, so be careful if you do buy one. But they're really cool looking. That's why I like them. So I think it's worth it's like 20 bucks. 20 something bucks. The little ones, like that one. They have like big ones as well, but I was really nervous to start drawing in it, but then I was like, oh, just do it. You know? Sketchbooks are for the drawing in. Maybe after the break, I can show you guys my. That'd be really funny, actually, breaking out the old sketchbook when I was studying. Show you what I used to draw like. The same class. Cube. Even though I'm not like super accurate with my lines, like I, I went over that one twice there. Whatever twice to give it thickness. I'm not super worried about the the double line. It's just like up close you can tell it's a double line, but from far away it's like yeah, it's like a cool shape. Um, I think if you're on the clock, you wouldn't want to do like like a detailed sketchbook, but I find it's really nice too, especially as like a, a student, if you're looking for illustration work or something, it's just to like present your sketchbook pretty nicely. And mine was a great example of it, to be honest. This was really my, my, one of my better ones, but I try to like, you know, give it some kind of background, give it a border so that when you're looking through it, it like kind of looks nice. Like pages like that are not super, super cool, but having it like a nice experience to like look through so that you can show another artist that kind of excited about it. A flowery bit. They just have like just some different warm up shapes I like to do. Some curves to get my hand like in the. Oh, that's a bad one. See, that's why we do warm up. To get my hand in the groove of doing like curves, but also straight lines and things as well. I tend to draw like fire and leaves a lot. It's like warm-up shapes. A bit of depth hatching. So it's just adding diagonal lines where things will overlap. Cool. It's cool. I also like drawing purely because they start doodling and doing necessary details and that's from pure passion ends up being really cool. Yeah, I agree. I think it's really cool. It's something I'd really encourage you guys to keep doing as well. Um, I find a lot of people tend to drop off because obviously there's no trad art classes after first year. So people stop doing a lot of trad art drawing or traditional drawing so something I'd recommend you keep doing because it is fun I wish I was still drawing more than I do when we were starting everyone was like oh man we can't wait for trad art to be over I want to do more 3D and then for the second year we're like we wish we had trad art still <laughs> Drawing by hand so fun. If you don't know what you got, the lid's gone. <laughs> cool. 
cool. I'm feeling pretty pretty good about my my lines and my warm up. Getting used to this like pen that I haven't touched in touched in a while. That was kind of cool. What else have I got? Oh, this one's kind of cool. It's a brush pen. A little bit harder to use, but generally I use these things for like rendering a background, right? So if you have a shape using a, a vivid or a brush pen like that to outline my shape. So we've got like a, what we got? We've got like a, so a sphere again. Got some cool hatching. Directional hatching. Not much of a stippler. Sorry, fellas. Hardly ever use dots. Hatches are where it's at. That's why. And quite easily and quickly set to add. Detail. I like how much like a thick line that separates the the detail from the silhouette, which is great with constant, right? Because I'm trying to figure out what's my shape. In this case, it's a sphere, <laughs> and then what are my details? So on a source for example, that's a really good quick way of doing it. Try and scream into sleep. No directionality. Try to keep all my strokes the same direction. I think with ink pens, something people things people forget, and especially with a vivid, if you like doing like a vivid outline or background like this. Is the direction of your pen strokes because the ink will like be at different levels of drying as it overlaps will like look a bit um funny like if i have like a bunch of thick lines next to each other and on brown card it's harder to see which is why i love brown cardboard brown looks like a paper like this favorite thing to draw on nice books and stuff are cool with like nice thin paper but i'll tell you what nothing these drawing on cardboard my favorite but if i was rendering this in different directions and you can even see the endpoints where i've stopped which isn't a direction change but it's just like a a change in in pressure right if i overlap the shape with different angles those brush strokes are still visible on that surface so trying to keep out our, our directional directional strokes the same direction Pretty cool. The other one I might do this six years would, would just make it look nicer, I think, is actually leaving a um, white space border as well. So instead of rendering all the way up to the edge of it, giving it like a, um, a halo. This kind of thing. Extra little dragons as well. It's one of my like classic. Doodlings.
Well, the good dragon. Oh, this is a great way as well to um, receive a style. Like I'm drawing in a bunch of different styles here. But if you want to draw, um, kind of like a trick I used in, in high school as well, in art class, um, we had to replicate, I think it was design or something, we had to replicate like a an artist. So I just found like a, um, a guy who's better at ink drawing than me. He's a nice cross hatching, and I just copied his drawing. And I just did that to learn the hatching and the style of it, and then I did my own drawing afterwards. And I feel like just by doing the art and his style by copying it, I was able to do nicer. I put my hatch work in, in like nicer places because I don't like a practice first. As long as I don't think I can I keep unless you keep doing it. Um, I haven't drawn like that again for ages, but it worked out really really well. And, um, so doing it like a like a study like that is a really good idea. It's not not for like the cheating purposes, right? You're not going to submit that as your work, but. A study like paint repainting a photograph, for example, is a great way to learn about lighting. And um, doing a study of uh, another artist by like copying their line work and trying to replicate it is a, like, the best method, I think, for learning how to do that line work, that line learning. There we go. Look at that. We got some kind of. I'm not sure what this is. I wasn't really thinking about what I was doing. It's early in the morning. I was just drawing. <laughs> But some nice line practice and line warm ups. That's pretty cool. If you guys want to send me some screenshots as we go as well, I'm just get the Discord open so I can see that. Post me some updates. Do we have a channel for this? Maybe not. Maybe we'll just do an art share. Oh, no, we do. We have an art, art design foundation. Cool, let's have a look. There's some like life drawing ones from ages ago. They look really cool. Alright. Cool. So time to do some swords. I'll do a few on the brown cardboard that I'm gonna move into my book probably. But the first thing I like to do, I've never drawn something before, is not just to draw it. If I just draw it and I don't know anything about swords, right? I do know a little bit about swords. But let's just say I didn't. It's just like drawing airplanes or something. Well, that would be a book example. I'll do a sword in an airplane. If I, if I was drawing a sword and like, hey, okay, making a medieval game or a sword, I don't know anything about swords, I might just be like, okay. Sword. All right, that's what swords look like. I remember. I'm cool. But quite often, like, that's super boring. I think people will start to, like, exaggerate shapes within proportions that are not realistic when there's often some really cool reference material for you to gather. So even though I've, like, drawn hundreds of swords, I still pretty much start every single time by going to Pinterest. And I've got a sword Pinterest of interesting sword shapes I collected, right? So look at this guy. That's cool as... So instead of boring guy now, let's paper up here. Start the drawing up. So, I um, because I'm not using pencil, right? I'm just kind of scoping out an area where I'm going to draw. I'm like, this is, looks like it'll fit here, right? I'm imagining. Here's my pommel. Here's my guard. Here's my blade. And the more you do it, I guess, the more you'll, you'll be in sync with that proportional side of the drawing. But it's the same as the pencil. It's be a bit more nerve wracking, I think, if you're not used to using it. And you will make, I, I made a, like a slight mistake there. Again, no biggie. And just draw it first time. Looking at the symmetry, trying to match it. And usually they, they start out a little bit wonky, but I get better at them as I do them through the, the drawing session. I 
not too worried if I make a mistake like that. I'm just going to draw over it, right? And I know the swords, you know, the swords look like, so I'm just going to cut it off. If you're doing design drawing, this is like the universal thing. This little like heartbeat monitor shape for this thing keeps going. But I think when most people see a sword, they realize that this thing keeps going. So you keep drawing the same pen. I'm just going to switch up to a smaller pen so I can do the details and have them automatically at a different, different, different size. For the hatching for the shading there, where the shadows would be. Or in these like curvy lines where my wire wrap, I can see my references. Scratches. Some kind of blade design they've got in there is cool looking. It's like this little star thing. Let me capture that. And there's like a little, little character on it. Some kind of like bird creature or something. I don't know what that is. And a crown. That's cool too. <laughs> okay. Just gonna block in some um, some shadows just by outlining it, which I think helps separate the shapes out even more. And there we go. We boom. We got a sword. That could be a little bit even excessive for. Um, for our purposes straight away but by drawing this i've kind of like now banked this right this idea this shape is in my brain so when i'm drawing more designs i can be informed by this we probably should do a few more studies right like this one before we start doing our own designs so let's do like maybe two more next to it and we keep going we're still more aspectual guards and games yeah me too me too. Asymmetrical guards are really cool. That's what we got in here. We draw a basket. That could be kind of cool. I won't go that crazy. It's a bit, it's a bit much. Maybe this one's cool. Pop that there. Next to it. Let's go look where it's going to go. I think I can fit in here. Next to it. There's where my guard's going to be. So kind of sketching it out, right? I'm sketching it in my mind. Mind sketch. Where the shape's going to go, so I'm not going to crash into the other one. Hopefully. Sometimes I do anyway. It's got some kind of, like, cool... Cool shape on it. I should we draw my other pen really keep it the same style? Again, it doesn't really matter. Change it up just a little bit. Is that old thumb ball? Looks cooler on graphic design than it does on like autographic projections that it does on a excuse me, sketch like that. That's cool. Oh, the idea of this like double fuller. So this is what that's called in the middle of the sword, it's called a fuller. Also called a blood groove, which is way more metal. Blood groove. But it's not anything you know, to do with that. It's just like a uh, clear cool name someone gave it one time and it kind of stuck because it was so metal that's like a wire mesh so we'll do like a little pattern 
like that. It's cool looking. Back that's black. It's got more of those weird dotty patterns on it. Our shadow. Kind of cool. I wish this was a little bit darker, a little bit thinner. So just add some more hatching to it. So this is sharp. Add a few hatches. Very nice. So another thing that's really cool to do. I don't do it too often with my dot cracks. I'm not giving it to anybody. Usually my concert's just for me. But if I was going to show someone this, this will save your life. Never just send your lead or your mate a picture and say which one you like best because they'll give you some weird feedback. If you give them a letter, <laughs> it makes it real easy for them to say, oh yeah, I like A. Give me the pommel of A and the guard of B, you know. So give them like a little, a little label. It also looks pretty cool. Cool too. I represent your work nicely. I'll just do one more study and then we'll do some of our own ones. This guy's kind of cool. It's a dagger, but what if we take that and kind of sword of fire? This is a parrying dagger. They're pretty cool. These would be used in conjunction with a rapier. You'd have it in one hand, kind of like this. Here's my sword hand. Here's my rapier hand. I'll have my sword back here and this dagger forwards. I'll try and catch the blade and twist to parry, and then I can stab them with my rapier. So a pretty cool little dagger. This one's got that big garden it for your hand. There are other stances too. You can actually go sword first and dagger second, but generally that's what it's used for. They're pretty cool. We're going to make it into a sword. I'm going to start with that leaf shape because it's kind of massive. Cool. Oh. Pommel. So it's cool like but that goes in. Looks sick. Oh uh, yeah, I should be using this one. Uh, not a great line. It's good though. I'm not going to spend ages raising and redrawing it because it's an ink. It's stuck. I've, I've done it. I've done it now. <laughs> I remember to keep loose. Nice. Wish buddy does in. So it's my smaller pen. And I'll replicate the gels this time. It's got like a. A peacock or something. <laughs> With our shattering style. Shadows here, shadows here. Shadow here. You can just like scribble on it a little bit, I think. For those dark parts. It's got some cool little blade details there where they start to sharpen it because it's really thick, these things. And then, I'm oh, sorry, not in the middle. The camera's so confusing, it's like inverted. Now fuller. C. Probably do it like a, we could do some cool stuff like blade geometry drawings too. So this one would be like a 
That's what it looks like from the side. This one here is more like that. This one is probably like quite an acute, not acute, sorry, chunky, chunky edge. You could go and do studies of individual, you know, drawings a little bit more for each if we if we wanted to. This one here we're gonna do like a don't do that one. This one makes us really unhappy. These ones make us really happy. Look at that. Sometimes as well, what you can do. I think um, back on one of those hard things because they can be quite tacky looking if you do them wrong. But I like to just do like a little background, even if it's just a line, just to tie these sketches together. So as this big page is progressing, right, these three are a thing that is meant to be enjoyed, right, and looked at as a whole piece. So you can give it like a little background. Usually I wouldn't put a drop shadow, but I'm gonna do it anyway because I feel I feel like it. And essentially what I'm saying is hey, look at those. Those three are important. Cool. The camera hasn't moved too much, right? You can still see. Okay, so studies completed. Now we, we've, we've mentally imprinted some design ideas into our head, right? I'm, I'm thinking like these curvy guards, holes and squares, interesting things in our, in our pommels, these leaf shaped things, hand guards, these little ring guards. Might be good to draw a ring guard in perspective too, so we, we understand what those are, because this might look like just like a guard to you guys, but I, I understand this my drawing, right? That's a, a ring guard. We drew some thumbnails. I'll just I'll sketch the ring there quickly. It's a little bit difficult, but if this is my handle and this is my pommel, my my um my guard, sorry. This is without perspective lines, this is kind of difficult to do. But it's kind of like that. If that makes any sense. That might be important to draw to communicate to you, someone who doesn't know what they're looking at. So it's a little sticking out a bit far, probably on my drawing there. I can be like, right. that kind of thing as well. Shows them all that is. I don't know what it is. Terrible drawing on ring guard. But first pick of the drawing. First perspective drawing of the day, so this is what it is. 
Okay. So we got about. What do we got? For 10 o'clock break, we've got another 20 minutes. So let's do some quick thumbnails. We've done our studies, we've done some thumbnails now. Our thumbnails are just, are just cracker versions, and that's just to, to like express some more ideas, come up with some interesting new shapes. So we're not using references now, we're using our kind of study reference, our internal guide. And if you had other references as well, right? Like you've done um, individual studies, like with. Um, this pummel page, for example, wherever it's gone, or this guard page here. You can always refer to your own drawings or your own mental library or your own reference boards that you've collect, you collated of this kind of reference as well. So let's just try and use what we've got just on our sheet here today. I'm just going to get my my smaller pen out. I'm just going to do some real small ones. I'm going to try and just do like silhouettes. It's a sword, so I won't do just silhouettes. I'll do some other stuff, but. I think it would be cool if this one had a hole here as well. Maybe some stripes would be cool. What if it had that same shape in the guard there? So I'm taking like shapes I see, I guess, in my in my um, my studies. <laughs> And trying to reapply them to these thumbnails, which are like quick, quicker drawings, in a way that's like slightly different. So I'm ideating on the on the design, I guess is the the term for it. Might be cool if it was like double sided. Be really hard to hold, but it'll look cool. I'll do like a different handle shape. Maybe it's like wrap real nice. Take the pommel from this one. A dome. A little bubble on the end, like that one. Hmm. Square one. The shape. Maybe spiky would be cool. No, don't like spiky. If I don't like concept. I can just stop it. I can be like, yeah, that one's that one's not good. Maybe more acute angles would be cool. Interesting. I like that one. It's kind of like sturdy looking. Give it a cool wiggle in the blade or something. Um, some of these leafy ones. Let's try a different leaf shape. What about a spiky leaf? That could be cool. Stab yourself in the hand. That'd be pretty epic. You have to admit. Let's put the other cool pommel on it. Give it a spike. I'll make it straight. Look at that. That's kind of cool, actually. The leaf pattern in there. It's like a ranger sword or something, eh? With a leaf on it. Ranger. That's cool. Okay. Kind of like this is a more leafy one, so they're fun. What about like a clover? That could be cool. Is that like little pummel this one has that goes like in? So maybe like it goes in, comes out. Squarey one. It's kind of a little bit unsturdy, but that's okay. Maybe we do like a let's do this but like a little bit more wiggly. So like a real 
don't know if I like that, to be honest. Wiggly might not be the move. But at least I learned something. Wiggly isn't the move. Hmm. I think I can do a better, better job with the Clover one. Let's try that one more time. Spiky. Hmm. Symmetry, come on. There we go. I like the dark handle, so we'll do that again, even though I probably should do something different. Let's make the pommel shape the same shape as the guard, that'd be cool. So, what crown. And we'll give it a complex one, like this one, I think. This one was cool. So, we'll go out and around. Spike. Something I wouldn't know how to draw really without looking at my little reference here. It's got the thumb or the finger ring here. So this is a safe place you can put your thumb or forefinger around the extra edge of the sword to protect it so you can get more leverage. It's kind of cool. Then maybe the same shape on this side. That looks cool as. It's like a Imagine like a fairy or something wield in that. It's like a sword, like a fey folk or something would wield this. Give it a blade pattern, some textures. Where the blade starts here. Like that. <laughs> That's not the move. <laughs> yeah, wiggly guard ain't the move. All right, what's the next move? Some more swords? I think so. Let's do some more. I like this one a lot. This guy here, I put a little star beside it because it's one of my favorites. And that way, the person who looks at it is like, oh, the guy who designs swords thinks that one's cool. Maybe we should listen to that guy. <laughs> You'd hope so, right? You'd hope so. I like this shape here with like the flower on it. So I'm gonna do a few of those maybe. God. Just like a simplistic one. It's cool. That little loop ring. I don't know. It went crazy. A bit rougher with it, but we trying to find something new. I always find when I start to like draw the same stuff, that's when I'll probably get to the point where I need to introduce like a new concept or a new idea. But again, you shouldn't be drawing the same sword more than once, right? So if you find yourself drawing the same design again, you're probably reaching the pinnacle or the end point or a point where you should be reminding yourself that you should be doing different designs. I think slight difference, okay? Like I'm doing like zigzags. I find those zigzags look cool on that thing. That's cool. There's always more designs you can do, but you do have a, a human brain. You know what I'm saying? Unless you're a robot. And human brains uh, tend to need like a some fresh input. You guys ever seen Short Circuit? Love that movie. He says that. That's the only reason I bring it up. He goes, more input. That's what I need. More swords to look at. More input. He says I'm more robotic than that. He's like, more input. It's a really funny movie. At least I think it's funny. See the zigzag? I'm going to try the zigzag on the square one. Don't know if I dig it. To be honest, this one's terrible. I hate this pommel. That was me kind of losing my mind a bit. Do the spiky bits though, it's kind of cool. I'm gonna give it a parrying like I know we didn't we didn't reference those, but I really like them. They look so cool. <laughs> I'll show you what they look like. Some drawing one.
Look how many cool designs there are, man. So good. So a parrying lung is often something you see on. That's so cool. That's awesome, too. This one has a parrying lung on it. Look at that. There it is. As you can see that. Essentially, a little bit of metal sticks out the back here. That's on the back side of the blade, which is still sharp, but less sharp. And it's the parrying edge. So if you have your sword turned backwards, there's a little lung to catch the sword before it hits the bottom, which gives you actually a little bit extra leverage. They're not very common, but you do see them in later swords like this. And you see them in great swords a lot too, because you've got a lot of leverage with a great sword. So there's another one there that has a lung on it. That's cool. Let's save that one. I very much like Pinterest for swords and other design stuff. Generally, the stuff on here is just going to be more curated from the get-go than a um, um, something like Google Images, right? If you Google Image Swords, you're going to get some generic stuff. Here you go. So you've probably seen these kind of swords before. These are called Zweihanders. If you played Souls games, you'll be familiar with them. They're a German sword, and they have these massive um, parrying lungs, which is like a, a, a leverage point, which is further up the sword. Then the, the guard, it's got essentially two guards. But it makes it, you, you can half sword it for your hand on this part if you want to use it like that, like a longer reach, but also it's just a better spot to parry from. That's why you see them on some swords. That's kind of cool. So now I'm kind of ex getting exhausted with my ideas here. I probably can keep going, but let's just like have a look at some of these and introduce some new ideas. I saw one before, like, look at this guy. It's a similar style of these kind of, um, not full ring guard swords, but they've got this like, I don't know what you call it, like a, almost like a suspension ring guard. That's what this thing has. I like the little feet it has on it, little medieval looking corner shapes. So maybe we'll introduce that into our repertoire. All right. What's a Brazil nut looking pommel on it? Very royal looking nut. And it's got like a ring guard up here. Obviously, if you're making a game about Vikings, you wouldn't add ring guards because they are like a very late medieval renaissance kind of um, uh, change to the way swords are designed. But definitely cool. If you're making like a late medieval game, you don't see them a lot in medieval games, late medieval games, even though they were a thing, right? So kind of a fun, fun concept. Maybe we'll add some of this to our clover design. Some of the things that I like about that one. Let's go for like a... Maybe like little clovers on the end of each of these prongs. Go too many clovers. It's not looking a bit crazy. Over clovered. Kind of cool. It's got a little hand wrapped around it. <laughs> it looks really fun. I don't know what I like something about it. It's kind of weird, but it's interesting. It could be the point where you're going concept crazy. It happens. You start to like the ones that look weird because they're just different. And some stripes for no reason because we want to keep changing our design up, right? Don't let it stagnate. Ring guard, spiky.
not super clear what those ones are, but it's kind of cool. This one's still the best, man. Like, it looks awesome. Let's just do some more like that. Doesn't look like one. Maybe it could be cool if it was a crown. Since it's like kind of a crown shape already. Maybe some kind of weird swirly pattern on it too. I'm not one of those yet. It's made of some kind of like material that's like a marble or a wood even or something. I think a good a good habit to get is just change something you haven't changed in a while. If you haven't changed it in a while. <laughs> it sounds really funny when you say it like that. But it's true. If I haven't done a different pommel in a while, I'm going to change the way I draw pommels. I haven't done a different texture on the handle. I'm going to do a different texture on the handle. It's kind of cool. This one proportionally is a bit messed up. This one should have been here, I think. It looks nicer like that. But it kind of gives an idea. They're getting a bit bigger as well. Look at that. I'm spending more time on them. I can tell because they're getting bigger. It's kind of funny. A small one, small bed. It's kind of cool. Let's do like a make another leaf. A couple more minutes. We're almost at break time. See if we can fill up this page before break. More designs. I want to try to capture that guy again. He's cool. Maybe the crown. We'll do the crown thing. Do the crown. Like that, maybe. Royal shapes, just more, make it more twisty, turny, wobbly, perhaps. Big royal pommel, big square one. Let's do some some of the same patterns seen in the guard. And keep it tied together, maybe something like that. Like a star would be cool here. Like there's a, a ring star, it's a ring guard. <laughs> I feel like ring guard is the new singy. I keep saying it. There we go. Look at that. It's pretty cool. I like that one.
interesting. It's like a wonky one. Not too big on that. The crown's kind of cool. It's a little bit tacky. It's cool, though. What else could it be? Maybe like a flower or something? It could be kind of cool. Like a few flowers. What if it was like... That was the style. Maybe the guards like like thorns. A bit more fantasy, but you could meddle with someone like that as long as you didn't stab yourself in the hand with it. Be a cool design. Maybe like a bulbous, bulbous pop. Oh god, it's cool looking. Do a flower on the end as well. That's cool. Pretty sick, actually. But more fantasy, but like. I like that. It's kind of cool. It's kind of a little bit low fantasy. You can imagine some of these metal details a little bit more. Simplistic, like a cool, like Alvin sword or something. Dark Elf or something. I do a Dragon Scarlet Blade. What's the Dragon Scarlet Blade, Archie? I'm not sure what that's from. This is one of the, like a legendary blade from some kind of lore, some kind of universe. Or is it your own one? Can cut through anything. It's your own design. It's pretty cool. I've been on different like blade shape in a while, different blade patterns. It's kind of cool to like add some like I like tattoos to your swords after. I don't know, <laughs> and grave kind of details like that. I'm going to put a few more in here. Just a few quick ones and then we'll go on break. Maybe like a round one that has those notches on the side from our cool reference thing. Some of this like food add on to Pinterest. Get out of here. Try to look at swords, man. Making me hungry. Plagued by ads. Hmm. I'm gonna stop that one there, but it's just a few different pommel shapes, maybe. What if it was like, like that? It was cut out a bit, like a, like a ring. It looks a bit futuristic. There's anything in the design that needs like a different angle as well. Don't be afraid to draw that. I think that's why I don't like why swords are fun to draw. Is you don't generally need to draw the perspective angle, the side profiles, because they're so flat is pretty much it. Um
Okay. Pretty happy with that. I'm going to add a little line and tie them together. I also got it before. Which I tend to just do for some reason. Right, right. Cool. If you wanted to, you could label some of these too. Again, we'll take these and maybe draw, redraw some of the ones we like. I'm going to draw some of them into the book. Usually, just draw straight into the book, like I said, but today we're being a bit more concepty about it. This is generally how to approach like a um, like a full on sword task, you know? But often it's enough just to grab a sword reference and change it a little bit, the ones you like from online. But we can do this kind of ideation to come up with these like m way more unique designs. I think. Yeah, this one's got the star still. This one's kind of cool. I'll give it a star too. I'll be like, yeah. This guy. Not as much. And then this one. That one's kind of cool too. Flower one was a bit much. I like something about this one, but I don't like that one. So I might re redraw that one a little bit. I might even give this guy like a a background, so you can tell it's my favorite. It's a little sign behind him. Thicker outline on some of them. All right, cool. All right, team. Let's go on break. If you want to post some pictures, I'd love to see what you come up with. If you've been drawing swords or some other kind of weapon or axe or character or whatever it might be. I mean, hopefully we've been all designing something. Hopefully swords, because I like swords. But that's kind of an introduction to my workflow. Talk a little bit more about it after. Maybe I'll show some of my other drawings and talk, we can talk about other styles. But we'll probably do some additional concept work maybe some more final ones as well after the break hopefully it's you gleaned something from it it's been somewhat interesting cool all right can i please stay <laughs> um I'll, have, I'll visit i'll visit occasionally it's pretty fun i like drawing it's nice um Okay, I'll see you guys back here at um, 10.40. Cool, grab yourself some water, some toast or something. Stretch. BRB.
Okay, well done, team. Like these drawings. Ruben and Toby. I like some of your shapes and your pommels, Toby. I like the little diamonds in the in the handle as well. Do you imagine them as like gemstones or some kind of pattern or something? Pretty cool. The crown one looks cool too. I like that one. This one's really cool as well, Ruben. This one here. That's my favorite. Very expressive, but I like the like the serrated blade and like this double spiky looking thing in the guard that one's number one number one concept yeah so it's really fun to make in 3d they're a little bit annoying to work with because the uvs are long generally um but yeah the one I like of your ones, Ruben, is this one. It's like, uh, I'll draw it because I can hold it with my camera. But it's like, okay, there. Yeah. That one, it's really cool. I would like take that design and push it a bit more do a few more variants of that with maybe some different shapes and just slight variations because that one's like a solid design i reckon it's really appealing yeah if i'm not doing that with that i find one like that right and i'm like i really like that one so i'm going to take that i'm going to do like 10 of them with just slight differences or a different pommel shape but like maybe just even simple things like different textures right like a different color or different type of shading in the handle maybe you do one handle that has like lines in it you do one that has like diagonal one that has like a wood grain in it you know and just like do some different variations of the same idea you could try the guard but instead of being so straight maybe it's like curved a little bit like that something that could be really, yeah could be really cool yeah, I like, the, I like that one a lot. What's, what's my favorite one of your one, Toby? I think I got one of the best of yours. Hmm. I think it's this guy, the one that's like. I know he's like quite simple, but he's got like a nice drum of its stout there. Just thinking about that, it's kind of cool. I think you could refine the guard shape a bit. This guy here. Looks kinda of like that. But I think this here is a winning a winning looking thing. The guard and the blade maybe I'll do some different different stuff on, but maybe a few variations of like how these diamonds are as well. Maybe if they're like in, they're like appearing on the other side like the other corners of it as well. So it's not just in the center, so it becomes a bit more three D. Would be cool. Um I like that shape. Same with the crown one. The shape's just cool there on the pommel. This little thing. It's cool looking. Yeah. The simple guys are cool too. I'm leaning into these complex ones, but you definitely could do some more simple ones as well. I kind of like this guy, actually. He's just got a cross guard, but he's got the leaf thing. It's like a simplification almost of the one we, when we studied. I reckon for you, Toby, do, do a few more, like, smaller ones that are more shape, a little bit less detail. Just explore the different guard shapes, even, like, taking the sky forwards and, like, that one you had. and um, Exploring complex and more simple guards, like, just put a few different ones on it. Because it's got, it's got some potential. These two are my, my picks. Cool. I'm going to make sure my coffee is still boiling over. Hang on.
<clears throat> Hello. Cool. Thanks, um, you two, for sharing. If anyone else wants to share their work, chuck, chuck it on in. I'd love to see it. Um, I thought maybe before, um, before we jump back into some drawing, if you guys would be interested, I could show you some of my previous work and just like discuss traditional art workflows a little bit. Would you guys be interested in seeing some of my stuff? Yeah. Okay. Let's get the coffee. Move that out of the way. <laughs> okay, so I'll show you kind of like um, what I think is good concepting. Um, a good concepting place to like kind of start, like what I used it for during my studies at MDS. I think it's probably useful to see. So this is in the front of the camera. This big tome. Um, Essentially, in, in my third year, we made this game called Titan Drum. I'm sure you guys have seen this before. But it's a game about, um, it's kind of like Smash, but you're on a planet. And I was designing things like the characters and different traps and things. And I was like the team's, like, quote-unquote, right, concept artist. But that meant I spent, like, an hour in class. Before, so obviously, you, you want to be making your game, right? You want to be drawing the whole time. Drawing up concepts quickly if we needed one. And also, like, on the bus and shit, I would draw right so you know what characters they were, were going to draw and then what colors they were so different um things like that and then other good things the concept which i think is as great as like trap ideas so our game we had lots of different traps we had like a this, these two ended up in the game cactus you stand on and like the spikes shoot out and then like a spring trap but like the sea mine would have been cool same with the trap door and stuff and there's like a lot more things like that so some more traps guillotines and different things and i feel like this more swords and shit as well but like you can see this is like real scrappy just ballpoint so it's like even quicker than what we were doing today right it's because oh we need a crate that deploys a trap so what's it gonna look like ah oh, just a crate and then we scrapped it in the end anyway we didn't want to have it but this thing made it in the spinner door thing this one so just like really really quick because there's like not, not enough time to um to mess around with that stuff so some some more i think none of those ended up in but i'm glad i didn't spend too much time drawing them more time drum stuff and then um as you can see we've been drawing swords for a while and some level designs and different different bits and bobs so that's kind of like getting out of my student drawings um that's what looks small it'll be easier to see So, a similar thing sometimes for, for like um, level designs, I'll do like a top down sketch because it's quicker than like laying it out in real or something, which I think is quite useful. There's some more concepts for, for Titan, Titan drum heads and things. And then there were some concepts like this kind of stuff for little islands in the game and what our trees were going to look like. So we decided on these ones, I think, in the end. Little bushes and, and trees. But just like stuff quickly to get to get mood and get ideas and like just prove prove a point essentially. Not just like making finished art for the sake of making finished art. Um that being said, like there is a time finished art as well. Um I don't do finished traditional art for um games at all here's another game we did which was like a isometric tile based one so coming up with different like towers and um like tile designs this was like an energy spawner and i think like so it doesn't have to necessarily be um stuff like you know we're designing a sword to make in 3d right it can also be concept and like we need a like a bigger a bigger thing like a shape for creatures there's like a enemy or something for that game another enemy a bunch more enemies some swords in between of course 
like that was like a concept for like the the look of the game. It ended up looking pretty good. It's actually on some MDS ads. This one, which is kind of funny. Or it used to be at least. And there you go, like a bunch of them. So we made a bunch of these for this game. But quite a lot of like, um, yeah, like it's faster to like decide like if you want something unique, right? Not just copying something from online. If you want something unique, it's faster. You generally need to like design, you know, the kind of we use this one in the end, the square, the square pillar arch, but like design the the shape. And draw it and write out your specifications if you have them so that you don't spend too much time like um messing messing around and that's me messing around there but like you know what i mean like deciding on what what it is you need and going through the the, the steps of sketching them out right so i'll doing digital art of this would have taken me like five times as long doing 3d out of this and then realizing it was not what i wanted would have taken 20, 10 times as long, right? But drawing it on the bus real quick on the way to school was a great way to be like, hey, team, uh, this, is what we, this is what we what I suggest we make or whatever. And everyone was like, yep, we're making these, we're making that. Chuck them in the game. Bob's your uncle. So, like, yeah, just like being kind of clever about that was once before we decided on the art style, some earlier ones. But like, having a, like, it's it's such a powerful tool to have this like little sketch that you can go back to and get everyone on the same page about an idea because so often people have a different idea about what the thing in the game actually is and drawing it can be good as long as you're not spending more time drawing right than you are making the thing you're okay i'd usually limit concepting especially for like a rapid game prototype or one of your school projects which is like a you know a one or two week prototype you i don't want to be spending five minutes ten minutes half an hour at most drawing some concept art up help the teams that decide on what um on what to make um um finished art as well so as an artist you might be interested in picking up some side gigs as well and i do a little bit of illustration um for like in Phoba stuff so i sold some um prints at armageddon which is something the school still has an armageddon stand if you wanted to um, do finished illustrated art, either fan art or your own art and sell it with part of the school, that's like a real fun activity that we still do. So I'd recommend if you haven't heard about that and you have some cool traditional art or digital art you want to sell, especially fan art sells really well, those kind of events, that's really good. Or things like um, Zinefest, Zinefest. But this was like an Inktober challenge for drawing a bunch of creatures. And these aren't just drawn straight with pen. This is probably the only recent ish work that i've done where um i do essentially a pencil pencil drawing first but i suppose weirdly what you might not think is i don't just pencil it onto this, this these pages and do it i actually draw the entire thing with pen first in a, in a bunch of different poses to kind of decide on what um what pose is going to look good or what I think it's going to be an interesting design before I pencil it. So I actually do all of my sketches on scrap brown paper with ink pen. And then I draw the thing in pencil once I've decided on the one I like. And usually it looks a little bit actually worse as far as how dynamic it is because it's not as free as the ink pen. But obviously there's no mistakes in the in the line work or the artwork because of, because of those things. So I've got a few of them. It's not long. I got better as I did them, which was which is really cool. This helped skill up so much. And I, I truly recommend doing Inktober challenges with pen drawings if you can. This is one of my favorite ones. This is the um, Atanifa. I imagined it as like a Mosasaur with like um, essentially like camouflage stripy patterns, like in the shape of like um, the Moko stuff. So I actually have a piece of concept stuff down the wall. So I'll show you. This is the the finished one. Give me a second. Okay. 
So. Essentially, I just did a whole bunch freehand like this to decide on what I wanted the face patterns to be. And this was after I decided what angle I wanted to be on, right? So I've already drawn some drawings from different perspectives or I'm curling around himself and stuff like that. And then decided on a pattern and then did the final, the final art. Um, maybe like a better example of that as well is like um, in the other book. So I'm still going with those. This one, some of these are un unpublished, but I really like this guy here. This is like a manticore design. I looked at a whole bunch of references, right? Like tigers and different things. So there's pause. I was looking at like sphinx cats with the naked hands to try and combine some of those elements and then get looking really cool. But the original drawing looks something like this. <laughs> here he is here, tiger. <laughs> Just to try to get the shape of what I wanted and the idea that he's got like spikes on him. And then I managed to find a refined one. So that is the original ink sketch. So there's no pencil involved, right? Where I decided what he was going to look like. And that was enough for me to be like, okay, let's pencil him in and then fill in the rest of the details. And I had photo references and all kinds of things open at the same time. So I guess it's just an interesting thing to think about. I suppose once you've got a method down, you can produce artwork like this. And it might not be kind of apparent to you guys that you need to like, um, I think a lot of people, look, it's like Big Bird from Sesame Street. <laughs> But I think a lot of people figure that um, you have to like just pencil in and then ink it when you're doing ink work. But I highly recommend just like you know sketching out your perspectives and your designs of what the shape and where it's how it's going to sit first, get that fixed, and then go in on your actual page with pencil and then ink it because it's going to come up so much better if you like figure out kind of like what we're doing here with the swords. If you if you figure out what it is going to be right roughly before you go in and make like a final nice rendered design it's going to be so much stronger and i guarantee if you guys took these techniques to your, your props right now like let's say you're making like a potion bottle um a coin purse and a dagger right and the dagger is like literally right that's right but if i did like a bunch of different purse designs with different patterns on them really quickly right and i did a bunch of different potion bottle shapes with different corks and different wax seals different labels and things on them and different like um glass engravings i guarantee you come up with a cooler more unique design by going through this method right of doing some studies breaking down the rough thumbnails right your rough kind of design like kind of like the tiger guy is and then creating that finished um piece and even better is like showing that process right like you have your finished you know rendered illustration and then um yeah putting it into that all the way through is really cool so kind of cool there's like a few different methods to think about in there it's like i'm just gonna put this back in the bag so let's put coffee on it um but like essentially thinking about what you're trying to make like if you're trying to make an illustration like like i was with these you know the, the pencil work might be worth it but again like you can be as rough as i was with the ballpoint pen for that titan drum game i was working on where you're just like slapping details together because your team needs some concept art for a trap and there's no point spending a ton of time um what's this one? Oh, there's some historical characters as well um but there's no point like like spending like a, a bunch of time um like um concepting if you haven't got much time right and it's not a, like a full production if you're trying to make an illustration like these, like you can go for it. You can put like put those kind of like um, more intense like methods to like the to the test, I suppose. But yeah, I find it like um really cool. I really like using um, pen, and if you're only using pencil so far, I think for concept art like thumbnailing, you can do it in pencil. But I, I just think that the the permanence of it means that you're more willing to just like move on to the next concept. You know what I'm talking about? It's like a very like the the medium kind of encourages you to be more direct and more um, more fr frivolous, I suppose, with your ideation process. Um, but yeah, I think 
that would be my, my main thing i think if you guys are doing your props still and even next for our next assignment when we're doing our 3d environments this would be a great way to like proof out what you've been making what you've been what you want to make and stuff like that as well okay so let's do like a a final one now maybe what we'll do is we'll take since we're being real designer about it we'll take our favorite ones like i was talking to some of the guys in the break about and we'll do a few extra designs just focusing on our favorite ones to try and refine them and then we'll pick our favorite one and we'll do like a um an in-depth look maybe like we did i had in my other um my sword book we'll break down the guard and like draw some more intricate designs on it and or we'll draw like a more finished one so something like this where we maybe i'm not sure where it is it's in here somewhere here we go we could do like a breakdown of some engravings we wanted to do potentially or if we don't want to go that far we could do a smaller style engravings as well just like a, a little bit more detailed but more finished drawing cool i'm gonna get some more brown cardboard hang on a second we'll do it on that it's easier to see on the stream as well This is gone. I've lost them. That's right. We probably need to use those. Okay. We'll put those in so we can still see them. We got a new piece of paper. Got mine. If you want some of this, um, I think I picked it up from Warehouse Stationery. You can buy like it's like a hundred bucks, but it's this giant roll. It's like a meter tall, and it's like this like radially probably. It's huge. I bought that like five years ago, and it's haven't run out. It's still going strong, but it's like recycled brown paper, so it's. Um, there's little weird imperfections in it because it's like recycled people's egg, egg cartons or toilet rolls or whatever, but real good. It's my favorite stuff to draw on, just if you were interested. And pretty cool because like, I just haven't run out of paper, um, which is pretty cool. Okay, so let's take some of our favorite designs and just refine them a bit. I'll we'll start with this one. So we're going to do similar things. Maybe we'll do slightly bigger thumbnails, but still thumbnails. And then we'll do like a final, some more final designs of it too. And again, if you've got some process shots as we're going, we've had, we've had um, Ruben and Toby share their stuff, which is awesome. Um, check those updates in Discord too. Even if you're drawing something different, maybe you want to take this process now and apply it to your props quickly. Um, I know mean, it's probably a bit late to change them, but it might just be fun to see if you can come up with a better design and then you can kick yourself about it and be like, oh man, I should have done some, done some more drawings before I started my potion bottle or something. <clears throat> Okay, so I'm going to start with my favorite one, which is this little wizardy clovery one here. She's in the stream. She ran quite a little bit bigger, that's all right. The break was too long. I warmed down. Hey, let me move this stuff on the floor. Otherwise, I'm going to run it over with my chair. Ow! There we go. I just crushed my hand between my chair and the desk. Excellent. Okay. I'm going to rim. Came out to here. Some kind of design here. I'm just going to say it's like some circular bits. 
I really like this here, how these like lines here are parallel to each other. I think that's really cool looking. It's really what's like one of the, the parts that's really appealing about it. Okay. And then there was some kind of, I didn't really figure out how it worked on that one. So let's just say, Something like that. <clears throat> Let's see if we still like it. Okay. A second. Back to just a uh, jiffy. Sorry, it's me. Back. Minus disaster. We resolved. <laughs> maybe I think now that I'm zooming in a bit, I can focus a bit more on the details that were visible before. So maybe there's some kind of like attachment here to the pommel. The shape is very crowny. I'm not liking it so much now that I've, I've enlarged it. I wonder if it's like a. If we're gonna go mesh or leather or something for this, I'm thinking probably like a leather one would look cool. I might start with the just trying to fill in some details and see what it looks like. So similar to our like original guy up here that had some like zigzaggy bits on him. I'm not sure I like that. I did like these little engravings. I had like a thing here in a circle shape. Another one. And we'll forget about the rest of the blade still. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be just a straight one, but we'll maybe we'll do some some blade silhouettes after as well to figure out what they got that's gonna look like. So it looks kind of cool. Um now that I've enlarged them, if we look at it in there are some like problematic parts of the design. I think I want these to be bigger and more flowy, less um angular. I don't like how angle this guy is. So, like I said, we're not changing it massively, but we're going to try and address some of those problems that we are things we don't like in the design. If you don't know what you don't like, you can you can change as well. Yeah. So the process is as we, as we go bigger and show more 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 detail and like stuff that maybe we, we didn't notice that this detail here will become apparent. Like some of the shape language is not holding up as well. Um. Again, you don't have to do this. Like, if you're pretty confident about this one, you could just take this and start to make it. But you would run into some problems where you go, oh, how does this thing actually, how does this guard thing actually work, right? Um, that would become, yeah, more apparent that's a problem potentially as you as you went forwards. But essentially, I'm just trying to, like, make my design perfect, right? So I'm refining it a bit more. Um, I guess the major takeaway is just, like, make sure... Oh, I think this fell down. Make sure that whatever concept process you're, you're taking is appropriate for the amount of time you have for the thing you're working on. I think that's the thing that messed me up the most when I was studying was treating everything like I had. That's something I didn't really do until the third year. The schedule I showed you just before. But like treating everything with the appropriate amount of time. So like the concept art is like 5%, even maybe less for the project. Take the time you have to complete that assignment, right? divide it by that much so you can see how much time you have to concept and then like sticks to it 
you know. Um, that or do your concert work in, your, in the downtime, right? So a good example of that is like I did a lot of it on the bus to and from um, uni. So like because it's like extra um, <clears throat> extra time that would have been wasted otherwise, it's fine to put like a bit more into the concept up because it's not like eating up the time I'm meant to be spending with my team directly, right? That's a really good um, method, I think, for keeping that fair and consistent. And also getting to do a bit more detail. If illustrating and doing art, like this is something you like. Okay, so more flowy this time. I'm just going to keep this like a spiky bit because I like that parallel. Go a bit further this time. Wiggly, I'm not sure I like that. That's right. I might not like it, but I can still explore some other details while I'm here. So I might do a different guard or handle texture, and I'll experiment with some different blade stylings, like with this one here. So maybe for this, maybe we could do like a a stripey thing. So like maybe these are these are like strips of metal in between polished wood. That would look kind of cool looking. Then for our clover, maybe we'll put like a, see what this looks like, like a scaled pattern. It's getting a bit noisy maybe, but it's kind of cool. Like I like lean back and have a look at it and be like, yeah, it's kind of a cool shape actually from afar. It's kind of weird that it doesn't feel consistent with this guard. So maybe we'll add a little bit of it to here and say, hey, it stops like there. It's kind of cool. Not really a clover anymore. It doesn't feel very roundy, sticky, outy. So maybe we'll, we'll add like a stem to it on the next design. So at the moment on the blade, I like that composition. It would be kind of cool if it was like a sun, I think. That would look really sick. Have like little fire bits coming out. Different angles like that. <clears throat> well, maybe we we'll extend this a little bit. Maybe we round it off, and that's where the blade starts or something. Like that. It's a bit grubby there because I'll cut it off a bit soon, but I kind of like that. That's better. I like that better, but this is a bit crazy complex. Let's make that a bit simpler. Um, is there anything I want to do with the pommel? That's my next thought. I think I do. I think I'll try a round one. Spiky guy is cool, but might be like a bit too much as a, as a full thing. So maybe we'll do like a... Let's do them down here. You still see that on the screen? Yeah. round shape. I liked it with this like flower pattern on it that I saw in the last one and maybe like the little, little bauble looking thing is called too. <clears throat> I'm going past the concept sifting stage but maybe like a, a fluffy like fur decoration here would be cool looking. Just gonna go for it. We are concept artists after all, right? Concept. And then our handle. And then our our clover. And I might try and make it a little bit more perspective looking on this one this time. So it's more rounded looking. And if I 
add like a little edge to those details there. It looks a bit more rounded. Next stem we're talking about. Have it sort of like flowing into it a bit more. I'm going to go full black handle. Leave a little strip there for a shiny bit. It's kind of cool. <coughs> Excuse me. And then <clears throat> I might just do like a rounded one on this one. And just go up. It's kind of cool. And why not? Let's do a flamberg. Different blade shape for a change, eh? You don't see these swords very often. Um, you see them in the Reynolds lots a whole lot more, but these like wigg wiggly blade shapes. And you see them like they're either bobbly or they're curvy side to side. And the point of them is um, they're not very good at cutting. They lose a bit of cutting prowess, but it's kind of just for style. Um, there's a the, the slight effect you get from having that is um, essentially if you're parrying and you run your blade down someone else's blade, it's going like, to do a lot more damage. To the sword and also like shake it a whole bunch more but it shakes it for both people so it's like not an advantage for just you but it's an interesting thought there are some like usage implications for having a different shaped blade that's why you don't see this one serrated ones very often not good for hitting people with it's kind of cool And we'll put some little detail engravings in there or something. Maybe stripes are cool. It's pretty fun. I'm straying a little bit away from it. I'm going to try and recapture it one more time and then I'll move on to maybe the next concept. So, I liked this one, maybe one of these as well. This one here, I think, I liked as well. So, I'll do one more of these, and I'll do that one, a few of those, and then we'll put aside on our final design. So, I think I wouldn't go into this much detail, for example, if you're working on um, a sword for a prototype game for your studies here. But if you're making a sword for, like, an assignment, right, that's way more excuse to like put this much detail in. Um, if you're making a sword for a personal project, way more detail to put this in. If you're making a game, a, a first person prototype, the character had a sword, only one sword, I'll put this much detail in. You could potentially, because it's only one sword, it's like right in the camera. If you're making a third person game or isometric top down or something, there's no point putting this much detail in. You just make the most generic sword you can, just like straight up. You can even do this little guy. When we said we said it's bad, <laughs> just for the sake of speed. Um, you can come back later if there's time. I'll sort it out. But quite often, that you know, it's nice to like put a little bit extra time into um, the kind of designs or things that you're passionate about. And I'm quite passionate about um, sword designs, so I tend to put a little bit more effort into them, a little bit more work. So I find the the shapes and the process of designing them interesting. Trying to come up with new ideas when they're very refined, kind of not refined, but like swords are kind of simple, right? So it's kind of interesting to try and find design, new designs, new ideas that are realistic, um, not just fantasy. So it's like fun. So yeah, it depends. I guess there's lots of different reasons why you'd. Um, go to certain amounts of details for different um, 
different concepts, you know, depending on the task. I'm real big on like morale tasks. Like if you're, if it's gonna like um make you care about the project a whole bunch more, you should go for it, right? Even if the rest of the team is like, hey, what's up with that? You say, well, I'm gonna put a whole bunch more work in to this sword stuff because I care about it, right? It's quite a good way to approach those problems sometimes if you have them in your team. This one's kind of slick looking. No, it's touching him. Wrong way. Oh well. It's <clears throat> cool. What are these little stripey designs? Maybe we'll. I've already done stripies, but I think it'll look cooler with. With those like that. It's like wider kind of pattern stripes. It's cool. It's a bit of fantasy, but I did draw those in too far, so we'll do something like, interesting like that. You can see like these kind of blade change sizes for like rapiers and things, but not generally for arming swords like these. Blade shape. Probably cool on here, maybe like a crown. Like some imagery, it's got a little horn, it's kind of cool. Leaf, another circle crown, I think it looks like it's like some complex engravings on it that we could add later. Pretty cool. All right, let's look at all these bad boys. We're in A, B, and C. It's a new page though, we can do that again. But we can send that off to our mates or to the boss and be like, hey, which one is the coolest? And usually bosses say, oh, can you combine the handle of B with the guard of D? Because they want to have like a effect on it. But you can be pretty sneaky about how you present your concepts to try and get the ones you want, I think. Usually the ones in the middle get picked, which is pretty, pretty silly. But trust me, it's one of those concept things. This one on the edge will like, never get picked because it's like too far to the side. It's funny how page composition like affects like a like good concepts as well. So this is yeah, so those ones are concept A. So let's do a little background for them. Let's look them up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look at that. I'm feeling fancy, so I'm gonna do like a little background pattern as well by doing these like kind of like line arrays pretty fun looking quite simple but like it makes it look nice And we'll work on this guy now. So, which one? Which one do you guys like the best? I'm thinking this guy. 
I don't know what it is about him, but he's cool. I think it's this like swirly hand thing that comes over the side and like the pointy bit on it. The dragon tail one. Which one's that one? I've forgotten. It's kind of stars cool. Dragon tail looking one. This one, maybe? This is why you need letters on them, right? So you can tell which one's which. <laughs> which one I'm talking about. Okay. We're going to do that little guy, I think. Okay, so he's got like a bulbous point for stabbing someone with the pummel. A guard with like a cool, cool guy patterned patent finish. So maybe like these ones are striped, like wrapped in leather or something. Maybe these ones are just like metal or something. Some stuff on for you. And then <clears throat> go across. Let's down. Feels like a spiky guy. Probably this is this little guy here is really bad. I imagine that'd be like a really bad lever to have on your sword. It comes off like this and it comes forwards. So we gotta make that look like it comes forwards. And he's got like a little hand that wraps around. Something like that it was kind of cool. It's kind of plain, but it's kind of cool though. It's important not just for every sword to be like, you know, not every sword can be like Sting. What's Aragon's sword's name? I forgot. Like a fancy one that everyone recognizes. Some of them got to be like a little bit more, a little bit more subtle. It's cool. Maybe like a little snake. It would look cool on the blade. Look at that, it's got a little tongue and everything. That's his egg. He's going for it. Kind of cool. Definitely more simplistic. Let's draw him again. I want to adjust some of the things in the guard I don't like as much. Maybe we'll try a more flowy one, flowy version of it. I think the pommel too. Maybe we do like a bit of a square top because the point's a bit much. Little patterns on it or something. Is there a round handle to kind of change it up? Could be a half, half wrap. Could be cool. Kind of cool. The biggest fan of it, though. Maybe uh, the design looked cool. Cool or small. Well, keep trying.
Maybe one or two more, and then we'll give up on that one if we don't like it. Like metal clasps or something, it kind of looks cool. I do like that spike there, even though it's not practical, it looks really good. Looks cool. Badass. And the original had this like curve here for some reason, but it kind of looks good. Mirror the shapes language. Kind of fun. Because they ain't doing it for me. I don't like them. Sign bad. Let's cut them out. So we'll just do three for those. Probably could refine them. Just like, my other one's just cooler. And we'll just do a cool background too. Tie those bad boys together. There we go. Continue this little pattern through it. Good practice from my perspective anyway, isn't it? A little interesting leading line background. Okay. Are there any more I like before I say my piece? Hmm. This is cool. Maybe I'll just do one more of these with the um, the ring guard thing, sticking out the front because I thought that was cool looking. And then we'll draw some, maybe some patterns or something, some detailed sections. Explore those a bit before we kind of decide on our final sword. Obviously, we're not going to be making our final sword today, but if we were considering this for a, a 3D, maybe you could take the sword into 3D and make it. If you really like it, the one you come up with today. You draw some more fancy ones too. You don't have to draw realistic ones like me necessarily if you don't want to. Draw some like crystals or something attached to it. A lava sword. A molten sword. That kind of stuff looks pretty cool as well. Soul blade sword. Sword with a gun attached to it. a little bit of bend it in if I could. Some of the cool design here. Wiggly 
material. Some description. Scratchy. The first long blade I draw is always a bit miffed. I like that one. It might be my favorite. All needed was a little ring guard. Ring guard. That's a cool sword I'm drawing, bro. Cheers, bro. Thank you. Keen to see this. Um, what do you call your one, Archie? The Scarlet, the Dragon Scarlet Blade. I want to see a picture of that in the uh, Discord. Oh, yeah. Show me, bud. <laughs> hey. Take a picture of something. Check it in. Okay, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Alphabet. Cool. So I think what I'll do now, start working on some design things. I'm pretty happy with this one. Not 100% with the pommel, but maybe like, you know, I can pick apart, mix and match a few of them at the very end if I wanted to have like one I was showing someone else to make. But since, since I'm making it, I can also kind of pick pick parts as I go. I think this one here is my favorite, actually. This one's really cool. And it's funny, I'll come back to this like in a, like a few weeks' time and I'll pick a different favorite probably. So I did with this book. I've made a few swords from the past that I didn't like in here, right? Old ones. I've gone back to and gone, oh shit, that's a cool candle, you know? Shit. Should have made that. So I'll come back to it and make different, different ones and stuff. But for now, let's just do some, some engraving details because it's kind of fun to enlarge and explore. So I'll take a section of the blade like that. Draw it out. All right. And then we can draw some little details on. Like little suns. Especially they got like a little face on them. Little face on the sun. <laughs> Some little creatures, maybe. Heraldic wolf. Of some kind. <laughs> it's 
It's another kind of heraldic creature over here. Probably should get references for these, but I'm just pulling that out of my head for now. It's kind of fun. Camus or something. Crown there, and then have some more creatures. Hold that. Completed the medieval way. Smell like text or something. <laughs> Missed. That's all right. That's another one. Maybe one more. I was going too long on these, but they're pretty fun. What's going to be? Be like a face. The medieval halo thing. Maybe holding a sword on the sword engraved on the sword that'd be sick warrior monk sword Like text written on the sign. Really cool. Let's 
It's kind of cool too. Some like that. So we've got two different designs there. Oh, oh, oh. Show that on if you want. It's kind of fun to have a look at like what might be engraved on the sword. Two different ideas. We got heraldic creatures and like a same looking thing. I think the next thing I want to do is because I'm trying to understand how I'm going to make this thing. Let's do a closer up, detailed version of the of the the um the cross guard. So. Big It's like a bevel on the edge like that. Kind of like our first concept had it. Got holes that could be cool. Oops, wrong way. <laughs> Damn it. Drew my perspective on the wrong side. Makes it look more curved like that. And a hatchet to try and add the curvature to it. So yeah, drawing actually this one. Not a big fan of that close up, but that's right. What's it gonna do? This thing. it up. Get any angles just to give it the shading. Scratches or something. And the our blade part here. So I think here would be like a weld. So we'll do like a little detail on the how it fits in there. That's our little detail part there. I'll add a little bit of 
the perspective line in. And you can do solid perspective just by adding like a little bit of extra line edge to one side. And that kind of gives it the impression that that's like a little, a little bit of thickness to it. These little shading patterns look cool. Sometimes you can just like Google a, a pattern or a motif, like the cultural group you're trying to make sword for, for just like geometric patterns and add them. I'm just experimenting here, but it's like zigzagging on it. But we have a whole host of different um. effects essentially from it. Cool. I'm just going to do some thick line hierarchy on that as well. Actually add some more damage to it too if I wanted while I'm doing that.
cool. Cool. So this is my, my, my final rendering. And I've got some ideas of how I would change it. And I could go in and do some more um, more detail if I wanted. But I'm pretty happy with how that's turned out. There are a few things I'd want to change, I think, as far as my, you know, my design is concerned when I, when I do get into 3D. But I'm pretty happy with um. This is my generic like this is this is the, the major shape. I think I've changed some of the, the details in here. Maybe there's a few more sketches of how those could work at the bottom. But I guess one thing you need to be aware of, right, is you can kind of go forever with this concepty kind of stuff. Um. You need to like at some point not get stuck by like essentially the decision paralysis of here's all the stuff I've got and be like, okay, this is the winner. Winner here. I do a few more of these. Oops. Draw the outline of it so I can mess around with the, in, the internal pattern. Just messing with my last few ideas on it to see if I can come up with something more interesting. I think I'm pretty happy with the other one that I had. I got one more spot here on age before it kind of looks finished. So maybe we'll do a zoom in on this one, which is my other favorite one, which I think actually I like better. Maybe we'll just do a zoom in on the on the guard to see how that would look. My other color was more like a Mesa, which has like a I guess similar to the top of this pen. It's got like a, a more of a right angle. Um so this little thing that comes off. Can look kind of cool. That goes down. It's the shading there. So that goes down into it.
There we are. It's cool. Maybe we've got some more of that filigree kind of effect in there. The shading on it. And if you um going to the NZ GDC, oh that is. It's pretty cool. It's like the you might have heard of GDC before. GDC is the Game Developers Conference. A lot of cool talks that are for free for like learning extra things. Lots of talks about engines or games or myth methodologies. Lots of really cool stuff. Um. NZGDC is, is the New Zealand Game Dev Conference. So um, if you want to Google it, have a little look. There's quite a lot of people talking from different studios all over New Zealand about a various number of different um, games topics. So a bunch of the lecturing stuff you've heard about already are going to be away for the conference. So you might have some remote classes or some strange people covering. It's not what's happening today. It's just cases away today. But... Um, you might find that there's some disruption in, in that regard, but it's only for a week. Um, but I highly recommend actually going down. Um, while you're a student, you get cheap prices for it. It still costs like quite a bit of money, to be honest, but a lot cheaper than it is when you're not a student, which is, which is cool. Um, and getting to like meet people and chat to game devs is like such a cool um, thing to do whilst you're still studying. Good opportunity to like meet some people, show them your work, chat about games, ask them questions about industry and stuff. And it's really cool. Everyone in New Zealand is real friendly about it. So it's like a, usually a really good, a good time. And um, lots to learn as well. As far as um, good talks about different things. Definitely something I recommend. You try, if not um, this year, maybe next year, or in your third year in particular, it's probably the best time to go. You're about to get a job, you want to talk to some people. That's, that's kind of the time you will, you're graduating a bit more, but generally every year is good. It's always new, new talks to learn. And even if you want to do a talk with it, we've got a, um, a student this year doing a talk, which is awesome to see. Sometimes lecture staff will do a talk as well.
Cool. I think I am done and happy with that. There's a few spaces I'll fill in just for the purposes of composition. There's a few spots that look nice, a few like scribble or some bits in. I'm a, I'm a fan of visual noise. Not everyone likes a lot of visual noise. I don't like my white space to be too, too blank, especially if I've got like some compositional problem like this thing. Looking kind of funny. But overall, there it is. So if we have a little run rundown, I guess our, our activities of the day. So we've got half an hour left, so we're kind of finishing a little bit early, but we'll be hanging around until 12.30, but I'm um, require you guys to chuck your um, your drawings you've done today, whether you've been working on your assignment or whatever, into the... Um, the chat but we started out with some of our uh pen explorations so playing with our pen weights different texturing methods just getting warming up getting used to using just the pen a lot of hatching practice here and some little warm-up shapes little drawings that generally draw just to get get used to it again we then did some studies of some soil designs we like so we drew a sort of memory i went oh shit, that's a bad idea isn't it we shouldn't draw shit from memory generally Come up with three designs that had good, cool patterns. Oh, shit, I forgot about the star thing. That thing looks so cool. I should have put that in some more of them. That was a good bit, bit of reference there. Um, and then we made some thumbnails. We missed out on the cool star thing on the blade, but that's all right. Here they are, thumbnails. And we went from some uh, relatively similar designs all the way through some real wacky ones, like these flowery ones and crowns and things. Drew some different part replacements as well different blade replacements and different pommel replacements, just a few when we got a bit um, bored or worried we were repeating too many parts, right? So mix and matching a lot of stuff. And then we picked our favorite ones and did some, some slightly higher resolution, right? Some slightly bigger concepts that explored some of the more, um, the details of some more of the silhouette, softened out some edges, came up with some new fun ideas as well, some more details as far as the engraving is concerned. We didn't just choose one, we used to choose two. You know, three is good too, four even. You could go with four. Um, and then we chose one and did some some focus drawing. So not drawing the entire thing at a full resolution or not even drawing the details at a good resolution, but just concepting out what they could look like when we go into ZBrush. Or if we wanted to later, we could get a white piece of paper, which would be easier to make a mask out of and draw that out properly with pencil and draw these little moose characters and stuff. Um, in a higher detail we've got our final rendering here which shows the, the detail and the shape a bit better for our artist to hand off to or just for our own purposes and also a second one down there as well of the other design so a pretty cool like design page there for swords um that's kind of i guess walking you through my like one of my processes for designing shapes and i've designed most things in a similar way like i was talking about earlier with this little guy our like tiger fella, the manticore. It's a very similar thing to this. We're, we're actually being a little bit um, cleaner with this stuff, right? This line works quite nice and we're quite direct with it. That's cool because it's like a one time, this is finished, we're going to show people this work. But with this one, this one's like more of a, I'm trying to figure the idea out. And the same thing for your games, right? Potentially, all you need is something like, similar to the, um, uh, where is it gone? The Titan Drum concepts I was showing before, where you have like a ballpoint pen and you just draw quickly draw out the concept required you know something like this right it's a similar thing but it's just much quicker less less um less care into making the line um the line work straight and nice like we did with these ones here but yeah a big i think emphasis on volume as well right if you're a concept artist and you're drawing like five swords you're doing it wrong like um thumbnailing is such an important part coming up with a good design like i wouldn't have come up with this thing i don't think with this cool like crown pommel and interesting star shaped design if i hadn't gone through this process right i would have just made one of these which are cool but it's interesting how you can go from like a realistic concept to a kind of a, a, a mix match of all that, that still kind of makes sense visually design wise within the the um, well, in reality, the sword, in my opinion, would, I think would, something in my head would work based on what I know about swords. 
So it's not like a like a bad on killing design. We're taking the things that work from real life and you know, walking through those motions and applying them in that way. So yeah, there you go. That's kind of today's um, today's class. If you guys could post your ones in Discord, I'd love to see. Oh, we've got some coming through. Maybe we'll go screen share and just chat with about those for a second. Cool to, cool to see them. Screen share on. I can't tell. Hey, there it is. Scroll up. This one's behind from break. I just want to talk about those ones were cool. Ruben was this one here. This one's like this one's sick. Right there. I love that design. Hopefully you guys did some more on those. Archie. This is the dragon scarlet blade. Nice. I like the different dragon designs here. I think I'd like to see a few more variations of it though, Archie. It's really cool, but like what different pommel and guard shapes, what different weaving patterns could you do on the, on the handle, right? You could experiment with like wiggly ones or straight line ones and go through a few variations to see the different styles or different creations. But I really like it. It's cool. It's a cool shape. Dangerous in the back too. You can stab someone with the dragon head. Hey, sick. I like it, Ruben. So you took, you took the design further. We've got some cool serrations. I like this little crown thing here with the spiky bit. And this one's cool too. The flame, the flame pommel, the sun handle. Soul flame. Cool. We got like an like an engraving on the blade too. That's sick. Super sick. Nice, Toby. These are sick. I like your little sun pattern too. That's pretty cool. These little parrying lungs are pretty cool. I'm liking that. The crown looks awesome, like dark like that. I think the the contrast, I really like mismatched pommels and guards, like if you have a bronze pommel and like a silver guard, they often look really cool. Those are some really nice designs. I think when I'm designing katanas and stuff, a lot of people like um, katanas and I forget the other names of Japanese swords and some some Chinese swords as well, but they have like this like disc guard. And I find it really useful if you did like something similar to what I did here, where you draw it from the side potentially and then explore the like the the pattern of the guard from the other angle, right? Because it's more useful to like explore because that that's in katanas, that's where the detail is, right? It's not um, as side perspective as um, European swords. So you can like do an exploded view where you're like, hey, here's my uh, look at my camera. Here's my katana. And then you do like a here's my my guard, and then you can like design whatever the pattern is here. There's some really really cool ones that I've seen online before, for like different you know styles of how that ring guards. Um, it's not a ring guard, is it? It's whatever the the guard. I guess it's just the guard. It's called, but. Cool patterns there, lots of variation. And I think if you're making an FPS game, the katana that'd be like the most visible thing too. So it'd be kind of cool to see that. Hey, these are awesome, Kalen. I really like this one here. This kind of like S shape. It's very flowy. Like the design language is really nice. And then these ones here, these cool little crowny bits on E, really cool as well. I really like that one. You got the parrying lung too. It's made an appearance. We'd love to see it. We'd love to see the parrying lung. And then some console out of your OC. Nice, actually. It's looking buff. Because hair is falling in the wind majestically. I like it. All right. 20 year old working hard. Yep. Looks sick. Looks like awesome. Yeah. Cool. Very good. Okay. Thank you, team. Um, I think we'll call it there. If you have any other questions for me, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you in 3D this afternoon.
take a picture of these and put them in the the chat as well. So we can see it a little bit easier. We have our our days days work uploaded. Proofs in the pudding. There we go. Cool. I think if you're like, don't do what I just did there. If you're doing your um presentation shots, I think you can do like cool presentation shots. You know, when you like people like do this kind of thing where they're like, look at my drawings, and they put their like pens all nice for like Instagram. It looks pretty cool. If you go to a photo, you should do something like that. I think. You know, you put your like the ammonite fossil on there as well you know make it look real like like you're working in like a tome and like a you know like a youtube thumbnail sketchbook tour <laughs> kind of style thing um but otherwise you should try and get your picture perspective list and a good way of doing that is either to scan it because it gives you good detail or what i find um as a useful strategy is just zooming in your camera slightly because if I take a picture of my work like this, it's quite bulbous. But when you zoom in and then move the camera back slightly, you get less pixel resolution. But because um, you're zooming in, you're not going to get as much of a perspective warp. So it'll go from it looking like, you know, more warped like that to being flatter. Um, it's a thing in film, you might have seen it before. Like um, if you zoom in real far on something, it looks like nothing's got perspective. And it's a similar method for taking a picture, right? If you are a little bit further away and zoom in a little bit, you'll have a flatter looking image, not as fisheye. Because I think fisheye pictures like I posted in the Discord don't look very good for a portfolio, right? Or for your submission. You want to try and make them look a little bit nicer. You can be artful in the way you capture your work to show people as well, right? That's kind of the, that's kind of the idea there. All right, cool. I got lots of books to put away now. Lots of sketchbooks on the floor. So I'm going to do that. But just ping the chat if you need anything. And I'll catch you guys later. Hey, cheers. I'm glad you had fun. Thanks, guys.